G'day, Rob here. If you've been following my channel, you will have already seen this guy in the last episode. Officer, I've never rolled a jointer in my whole life. If I have, it was probably back in my university days and I don't remember it. I got this big thing a couple of weeks ago and there's a lot to learn. In this video I'm chewing the fat about what I've learned so far. The first thing about it is that I don't have anywhere to put it. Thankfully it came mounted on wheels. So let's get rolling. I asked my first wife if she would leave her car on the driveway from now on so I could park my jointer on her side of the garage. Well, that conversation didn't go down so well. Or so I thought. When I came out of the doghouse the next morning, the car was gone, so I guess that means I won. Here's a little bit about the jointer. She's running a single phase 240 volt one horsepower motor. I assume this is the original. So going by the September 1994 date stamp, she's just turned 24 years old. The same age as my second wife. I think we'll just get this next part out of the way before somebody calls the cops. Did you notice me run a piece of wood over the cutter without a push block? Well, that was the only time I did it. After that I used the period correct leather feeler boot, also from the 1990s. But it didn't have a non-marking sole and it left the workpiece looking like an old pair of underwear. I also tried using a jandal, but I didn't like the way my toes felt with sawdust on them. It also made me feel uncomfortable that in some parts of the world they call these things thongs, and that is underwear. I got some excellent advice in the comments on my last video about how to find the grain direction by stroking the cat and uh, it really works I can feel from this one that grain direction is going this way when I rub my fingers the other way it feels just that little bit rougher and this way is really smooth so with the grain going in that direction, I know that I want to feed my board through uh, in the uh, opposite direction, so I'm not going against the grain. So pushing it through this direction is going to give me a, a real nice finish.
looking pretty good indeed. Very nice. Until you actually have one in your hands, it's difficult to notice details like this, but the fence on this model attaches to this big T-slot at the end of the infeed table. If I'm not mistaken, most modern designs have the fence attached in the middle between the two tables. These inaccuracies in the fence angle can be corrected with these grub screws at the back and you've got them at 90 and 45 degree positive stops. I noticed after fine tuning however that whenever I tighten down the fence it goes slightly off 90 degrees so there's just something maybe to do with the age of it and being a little bit worn out but I'll need to check it out. Another really weird thing when I tighten it up is that the fence goes out of straight. I don't know if that's by design or by accident it doesn't seem to make a difference to any of the cuts that I've made, but... Well, this has been just a short introduction to my new jointer, which I'm still getting to know. I'm still learning about jointers and uh, how to set them all up, how to get them square, how to get them cutting nice, setting the knives and everything. I was going to do a deep dive into putting the new knives on, but I realized that... I'm probably not doing that the best way. It seems to be working okay, but I want to do a bit more research and a bit more experimentation and find out the real proper way of doing this, and then I'll do another video. It's great for removing bandsaw marks. If you're looking to make a bit of money on the side, this is the perfect tool for a prostitute working the high-end hotel bars. A couple of passes and you're flat on your back. <laughs>